Oh, she's so friendly. They say she looks like Lady Gaga. Oh, so she nips. Yeah. Yeah, she's a nipper. <laughs> I met a guy that lives in Alaska who breeds Canadian Labradors. He's got like five
Gold pans you'll be using today are just like the gold pans they used back in the first gold rush. And to get started, what you want to do is go ahead and take your gold pan with two hands, fill that gold pan completely full of water, then bring it right back up. Now once it's full of water, you want to take your gold pan and shake it from left to right, right to left.
with the water when, uh, when they were mining this place? Uh, back in the day, they would have had a bunch of people in here with hand pumps. Oh, really? Trying to pump out as much of the water as possible. Just constantly pumping hand pump. And usually for that job, you have like the younger people doing it, so you're looking at, for this mine, about 16 or so. Uh, mine's older than this, as early as like 8. This drill on the ground behind the fence here, that's a drifter drill. We have a better example down here we'll talk about later. Here's the fun part of the diamond, right? Yeah. There's foot. That's Kermit right there. One of the most asked questions I get when I show them off is, is that a real frog? <laughs> Are you sure? I promise. Out of all the fake things I bring down here, I don't think a frog would be one of the boss now, so we gotta make sure he's happy. <laughs> Bringing down some crickets or something. Uh, not too slippery. I haven't had anybody slip here. If you do, just grab the legs of the person behind you. It's always good to have a friend. So. <laughs> and your fuse would be about six feet long. So you'd be down there, you'd light the fuse with the candle, and then you have about three minutes to make it to that safety tunnel down there. A lot of people then tell me, well, you want to run down there. And that would be a good idea, it's just not a great idea with a candle. Because <laughs> the candle's not going to work. So, what you want to do is take a hand, put it on the wall next to you, and use that to help guide you through the mine here to that safety tunnel. Kind of like walking as quickly as you can. You only got three minutes, but you also got to have light as well. So, I'm going to turn those uh, lights back on for us, everybody. So, if you're ready, three, two, one. There they are. Typically, how many? Men were working on a day? Uh, anywhere from one to three hundred on like a normal day. Uh, however, I've seen up to uh, about nine hundred before. So, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the big difference is, once again, sorry, will be your stand here, just to hold it sideways. That other drill weighed close to 200 pounds, so you have to hold that thing sideways if you're going to do it. Yeah. And then that piece that was touching the ground that we saw over there, inside of it there's a little smaller piece of metal, and that would push it up against the top so it makes drill that hole a little easier. They could have done that with this, however, it would have been a much bigger pain to have a, a big piece of metal pushing it up against the wall. So what they did was they had this crank here, and as you would turn that, this top part of the drill would push forward up against the rock and make it a little easier to drill. However, the reason why this is my favorite is this drill is from 1903, so technically it's newer than what they would have used here by one year. So it's basically what they would have used. And the coolest part is this thing still works, which is the really crazy part. And I get to turn it off, of course, which is the best part. Now, it's not as loud as it was back in the day, so you don't even have to cover your ears if you don't want to. I stand right here and I don't. But if you do, I'm going to put my hand up when I turn it off. I would highly recommend to uncover them. It's going to echo through the entire mine. That's a really cool sound here. So, if you guys would like to hear it and you're ready, I'll give us a, a quick countdown and turn it off for us. Everybody ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. So how was this shaft created? Did they blast through it? Or? They did, yeah. Everything down here they did with dynamite. None of these are like natural caves or anything. Huh. How, okay. how come the ceiling is just, I mean the ceiling and floor looks so uniform. Uh, we poured the concrete for back to actually. So I've been working here for two years and I can't believe this, but it's actually a main port there I never noticed. <laughs> Oh, you see that? That rock right there is where they where they got the gold out of. Oh, they'd yeah. find they'd find that rock and there's gold in there. See that? The quartz, you mean? Yeah. Yep. It's a different kind of rock all around the world. It really depends on where you're at. Wait. That's okay.
Now, I'm sure we all see the problem with just the, the leather. Uh, however, even this hard hat wouldn't be able to stop those rocks. They can weigh up to a couple hundred pounds at times. So really, the big problem was the direction you use the drill. If you go straight up, they're going to come down. If you go sideways, however, you're going to have a lot more support above you, and there's less of a chance you've got to worry about something like that. To give you an idea of how strong this rock is, if we were down here and an earthquake happened, I don't even think we'd notice. Uh, there's a guy out in California, I was watching on a video, he was in a mine, and he heard what he called the ghost echo, which is when you step on the rocks and it echoes behind you, sounds like somebody's behind you. Turns out it's actually the earthquake is what he was hearing, but he didn't even really notice it. And uh, he got out of the mine, checked his phone, and there was like a huge earthquake in that one area. He was in. I can't remember the magnitude of it, but it was like four or something, so it was pretty serious. <laughs> 